Thank you. There's a big push happening to get more electric vehicles out on the road. The Inflation Reduction Act expanded tax credits for some EVs, but the process has been really confusing for some car shoppers. So new this morning on your side, Susan is here to show us how you can still save some money for that car you love. Yeah, even if you don't qualify, there might be a chance. So okay. we're going to walk you through it right now. For car buyers to qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, there are all kinds of requirements. For one, the car has to have undergone final assembly in North America, but there is a little loophole. You want to buy a new EV. You've heard about a $7,500 tax credit. Well, that sounds good, but it doesn't apply to every EV on the road, and it doesn't apply to every car buyer. The car needs to qualify, it needs to be manufactured in the States, your household income needs to be taken into account, and the, the actual MSRP of the vehicle needs to qualify. Jason Church is the Chief Operating Officer of Courtesy Automotive Group. He says if you find an EV you love that doesn't qualify for tax credits, you still may be able to get that $7,500 savings thanks to a little loophole for a lease. According to the IRS, businesses can claim an unlimited number of commercial clean vehicle credits, which means leasing companies that get the tax credits can pass on the savings to their customers. You're going to get a lower lease payment because the 7500 will be applied. There's no restriction on where the vehicle is manufactured, no restriction on MSRP, and no restriction or qualification needed on your household income. The Polestar, for instance, the 7500 vanished poof, um, but then come January with the IRS, IRS clarification, we were able to apply that, so now we have lower lease payments on the Polestar 2. Same with the Volvos, uh, the C40s, the XC40s, as well as uh, also plug-in hybrids as well. If a used vehicle fits into your budget a little better, there's a tax credit of up to $4,000 for used EVs. It's a credit that exists on paper but doesn't exist in reality. And the reason I can say this is that there's a, there's a $25,000 max on that. And unfortunately, with used car supply and demand being what it is, um, there is, to find an electric vehicle under 25000 is very hard. Maybe in a year or two when we, we have more EVs coming back um, at a lower kind of book value, then we'll be able to actually access that. In fact, according to AAA, right now EVs account for less than 1% of vehicles on the road. But as interest grows, so do car buyers' questions. So AAA just created a used EV buyer's guide. One of the biggest things that people need to look out for is the battery life on an EV. It's a lot like your phone. It degrades over time. It's easy to find out how much. Ask the dealership to fully charge that EV and see what its maximum range is and also look at the maximum range of a brand new car. And you can see the difference there and you can find out how much that battery has degraded, if it's a lot or very little. AAA says it's also important to check the EV's warranties. Manufacturers are required to offer an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty on traction batteries, but not all warranties are passed on to future owners. According to the IRS, several car makers, including Honda, Toyota, and Kia, have entered written agreements to become a qualified manufacturer so car buyers can get that tax credit. But those car makers haven't submitted a list of makes and models that will be eligible for the tax credits just yet. But we know that's something to be on the lookout for in, in you know, hopefully the short term, right? Because we want to see more makes and models become eligible for these credits. Yeah.